you guys. We made it. We are officially on day 25. We made it. 25 days of praying and fasting. We made it. Okay. I am excited. Wow. We did it. We did it. This is the last day of the year of the bride fast. And this is our testimony. This is what you will testify. This is your testimony. One more time. You guys, I'm excited. Welcome to day 25 of the Year of the Bride Fast. Wow, we made it, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. We had a time. I believe that I have been, in 25 days, I have been in a few different countries. I have probably been in about seven different states. And uh, by the grace of God, we were able to complete the 25-day fast. So we give God all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. Wow, we made it. And so I'm excited. I'm excited about many things. You know, one of the things that God, I believe, is always talking to us about is Matthew 25, the parable of the talents. Right. And many people look at that as like money, which it was an example of. But talent speaks to so much more than just your money. It's like many of you are hiding gifts and talents on the inside of yourself and you refuse to let them go. Many reasons, fear, abuse in the past, things of those natures. But it's like even with the gifts and talents you have, if you are, you know, hiding it like the last person in the parable, then he's like not going to give you more. And so what I thought was powerful is that this fast was a, a great example of that parable for me, um, it was. And here I'm asking God, because you know I'm not, unless God come and sit on my couch and my couch break and I hear a loud thunderous voice and make me run around the corner and then he gonna say, don't be afraid. And then a little bit of snow flurry come down and a little rainbow got to show up. I forgot what my other requirements were, but those are some of them. I'm not mentoring anybody, right? And so here God is telling me that, you know, to multiply myself and other people, right? And don't over-spiritualize that. I don't mean like my spirit is going to go inside of you. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying like multiply what I know, teach what I know into people. And I'm like, well, I don't know how that's going to get done because I'm not mentoring none of these people, God. They... Mm -mm. And here we have like this fast where I have too many emails. I, I can't even keep up with them. But people that have kind of fallen out of love with God or been saved for a million years and, you know, never really took it their walk with God seriously. I have seen so many gifts and talents come out of you. It is incredible. Like I am watching 
gifts and talents. I am watching people study the word of God like crazy. I am watching people break down the word of God, break down every single word to say, Tiffany, I know you taught this, but here's an additional level of revelation that I got. And I am blown away, honestly, that people all over the world are now digging into the word of God. I think that this this fast was so much more than marriage, even though it's all about marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like this fast, it for those of us that did it every single day, for those if you skip the days, I'm not talking to you. I'm not saying, you know, something ain't gonna work out for you, but I'm not talking to you. But for those of you that did every single day, you stuck with it, you did the assignments, all of those things, you have a deeper love for God than you ever had before. You have a diff- you have a different revelation of God than you ever did before. You have a different desire for God than you ever did before. You like everything about your your relationship with God is different. Everything is different. How you see things, how you perceive things, how everything is different. And I believe that um God is pleased. I think that he is pleased And one thing about a fast is that it makes things happen fast. And so I am, I am very excited about everything that God is going to do. I'm excited to see your testimonies. I'm excited. I'm just excited. And so if you are just joining in or you're like, Tiffany, I'm definitely one of them people that didn't stick with it. I did the best I could, you know, don't, don't quit. Start all over again tomorrow on day one or say, um, you know, on Monday, I'm going to start at day one. Start again at day one. Turn this into a 50-day fast. Turn this into a 40-day fast, right? Turn this into a seven-day fast. Condense all of the lessons into seven days. Like, turn it into a 15-day fast, right? Like, condense them all into those specific days. And um, it's just so good. So good, so good, so good. So you don't have to quit. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to quit. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You can keep going. Uh, And those of you that did do the fast, you might want to continue to go and say, you know what? I want to start at day one. This was really weighty and all of that. And of course, I'm actually going to have a book um, that has all of the prayers, all of the things in that book. And so I will be releasing that, um, I would say, within the next 30 to 60 days, but no, no further than that. Like that's uh, it's got to come out. And so um, that's going to be very powerful on top of, yeah. So many of you, um, you know, some people reached out like, Tiffany, hey, I made a book for you and this is a book and I, I wondered if it's okay. It's not okay. Thank you for asking me, you guys, but it is not okay to take somebody's work and then put it out as your own. That's never okay. Okay. So please don't do that with any of my stuff. Um, The Holy Spirit will give you your own message, your own revelation, your own everything. But don't take my stuff and put it into book form and then sell it or give it away for free. Like, no, don't do that. Thank you. Um, And also, you know, just remember that prophetic plagiarism is a thing. So don't steal my stuff as well. I know many people get their panties in a bunch when I say that, even when I show them scripture in the book of Jeremiah, where it says that God is against those that steal their words from their neighbors. Um, He hates when people plagiarize the prophetic word, not because, uh, you know, God is like, okay, this is good for for this word to go out and all the prophets is because the person that's stealing the words is operating from a different spirit, right? That is why God is against it. That person is operating from a spirit of error. It's likely a false prophet, it's coveting, want to be like me. It's a lot of people that put me on pedestals and have made me their idols. That's why I try to tell people as often as possible, don't make me your idol. Um, but that's why God hates it. It's not that God can't talk through everybody and say the same things. Obviously, a lot of the times that happens. But when people literally come to steal words from a prophet, that is a person that is operating out of a masquerading spirit. It is a familiar spirit working through that person. It is a demon and none of you should be following anybody that does that because that person is dangerous. They're wide open. That enemy have so much access to people like that. So that's why you should not be doing it. And um, that's why you shouldn't be okay with following anybody that does. You understand? So, um, it's so good. I'm excited. I'm excited. 
Okay, so what I want all of you to do is on day one, you all rewrote out, you all wrote your congratulations letter, right? On day one, you all wrote your congratulations letter and you wrote the characteristic of your spouse out. And remember you wrote a congratulations letter, but you didn't put your spouse's name in there. And you wrote the characteristics that you wanted in a wife or the characteristics you wanted in a husband. And what I want you to do for those of you that did this fast, I want you to go back today on day 25 without looking at your first congratulations letter. I don't want you to look at it without looking at your first um, characteristic letter. I don't want you to look at that. I want you to rewrite on day 25 your congratulation letter. And I want you to rewrite the characteristics you want to see in your wife and the characteristics you want to see in your husband. And the reason I want you to do that is because some of you, maybe it'll sound the same, but some of you is going to be completely different. Some of you on day one, you know, you came with hurts, you came with soul ties, you came with scales on your eyes, you came with trauma, you came with a lot of different things and your taste or your palate or what you desired came from, you know, an old season. And so I'm just excited and interested to see without looking at it at all, what the new characteristics are, what the new thing you want to see in this is. And for those of you that lost a lot of faith and you just felt like you had to settle for anybody, that now you're like, I'm not settling. I believe that if God can part the rest, see, this is nothing to God to send me the husband of my dreams. This is nothing to God to send me the wife of my dreams. Like I'm not even settling. Before this fast tip, I would have settled. I thought I was unworthy. I thought, but you've taught me how to take every thought captive. And if I hear that I'm unworthy, I know for sure it's the devil himself whispering to me. And I know that this is you, right? And so um, I'm excited to see what that looks like. And I want you to make sure for day number 25, is a day full of thanksgiving i want us to be like the leper when not, not not like a real leper you know what i'm saying but like when jesus healed the 10 lepers and there was only one that came back to say thank you to god i want us to give god such a strong sacrifice of praise day 25 is going to be such a high level high expectation high 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 sacrifice of praise like covered by god tonight is gonna be fire covered by god i'm already in atlanta you know we meet in atlanta the 25th day of this fast it is going to be fire the only special guest we got is the holy ghost okay we are going to have an amazing time um, and we're just going to see the supernatural hand of God move so even if you're watching this a year from now 10 years from now 20 years from now even my prayer is that that specific live is act is alive and active. Even 20 years later, you're still going to reap the fruit of what God is going to do in that building, in our lives, in your houses. Those of you that will be watching the live stream on that day, it is going to be absolutely fire. So please, all day from um, the 25th day, you make sure that you are... Um, in high worship, high thanksgiving, giving God the sacrifice of praise, just high worship, high thanksgiving. God has answered you. God has heard you. The barriers have broken. Breakthrough is here. Anything of that nature, this is good. This is exciting. Um, Cover by God starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you guys can go to Google and see what time that is in your time zone. But it's and, but I will also send out an email with the link. So for those of you that want to get on my email list, please go to www.coveredbygod.co. Again, that is www.coveredbygod.co. So good. I'm so excited about Covered by God. It's going to be fire. Um, okay, so let me just teach the lesson and let you all go. Um but i want to take you back to matthew 25 today's lesson is called here comes the bride and i just kind of want to take you to matthew 25 so just go with me we're going to go over this message um because i believe that this is what this fast was all about so i want to kind of end out with it 
But here you have a story about five foolish virgins and five wise virgin, virgins. And this is, this is an example of what the kingdom of heaven is like. So this is a very powerful scripture for those of you that want to read it and really meditate on it. This is an example of what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's like these virgins that took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise. Five of them were foolish. The foolish took their lamps but had no oil in it. And the wise took their oil in their vessels with them. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, because most of us consider ourselves to be very wise. And most of us would be like, we're not foolish. But many of you are more of the foolish brides than you are the wise brides. Which means that most of y'all are going to hell if y'all don't fix this today. What does wise mean considered in the Bible? It means to be intelligent. It means to be prudent. It means to be thoughtful, it means to be discreet, and it means to be of cautious character. Now, this example is not just gender specific. So I know here it's talking about the bride and the bridegroom, but essentially in the body of Christ, even the men are the bride because Jesus himself is the bridegroom. So this parable is not gender specific men uh, for you. This also applies to you as well. The wise virgins were intelligent, they were prudent, they were thoughtful, they were discreet, and they had cautious character. Prudent means showing care and thought for the future, meaning they're also advisable, right? They're teachable people. Many of you, that then will cross you out because you're full of pride. So that's the wise virgins. The foolish virgins um, were considered impious or godless. Now, some of you may say, Tiffany, that cannot be me. I'm not godless at all. But here are the examples of that word. It means ungodly. It means unholy. It means full of sin. It means immoral, unrighteous. It means deceitful. Some of y'all are very deceitful. But here's the thing that most of you will probably relate to is that this word means to be disobedient. That marks off about 95% of you on this live. Disrespectful, hardened, unfaithful, perverted, and wicked. Um, and so if you are disobedient to God in any way, you are considered one of the foolish virgins, okay? Now, what were the differences between the foolish virgins and the wise virgins? Well, the wise virgins took oil in their vessels um, in their lamp. The oil here is representative of the Holy Spirit. The foolish virgins had their lamps, but they had no oil in it. And it's really like the scripture that says it has the appearance um, of God. It has a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Um, they had the appearance of being ready, but they were not ready. This is similar to people that go to church with us, right? You see people that sit in church. Sometimes you can't tell the difference between who is who. And it takes the gift of discerning of spirits to be able to tell who has the Holy Ghost and who doesn't. So here we have, um, here we have an example of, of the bridegroom and the bride. And what God is saying to us is the difference between the one that's ready and the one that's not ready is who has the Holy Ghost. Everybody that speaks in tongues does not have the Holy Ghost. Everybody that gets up there and preaches on Sunday does not have the Holy Ghost. Everybody that reads their Bibles every single day does not have the Holy Ghost. It will take somebody with the gift of discerning of spirits, especially in these days when wickedness has increased and people literally cannot tell the difference between who is who for you to say that person has the Holy Ghost. Most of us judge things by appearance. That's why half of y'all don't like me. You're like Lion Laura, okay? If you had the Holy Ghost, you'd be able to discern who is who. But if you continue to judge by appearance, like the Bible warns you not to do, and the Bible says, judge according to righteous judgment, you'll be able to see somebody not like them and still say, you know what? This is an issue within me because the Holy Ghost said that that belongs to them. That person is filled with the Holy Ghost. It must be something in me that I don't like them. Let me go get that fixed. Only somebody that is advisable or prudent or a wise virgin can be able to do something like that. And so there is no apparent difference between the wise virgin and the foolish virgin. Everybody looks by appearance exactly the same way. Um, however, the difference is somebody has the Holy Ghost and the others do not. So the oil is representative of the Holy Spirit. Um, one thing I love about this story is that if you don't have the Holy Ghost, nobody is prepared for the bridegroom. I think that's in the spiritual sense and in the natural sense. That's why just because somebody got married doesn't mean that they were prepared for it. I don't think that God can take anybody and make them one person without the help of the Holy Ghost. Like that's such a supernatural thing to do to make somebody bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. That is literally only the Holy Spirit can merge 
these two people together and graft them together in a way that's seamless. So with the absence of the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, it is impossible for anybody to prepare themselves for the bridegroom. This is in the natural and in the physical. Now, um, I read this before and I thought this was such a powerful analogy of the Holy Spirit. And I think that this is a great indication on if um, somebody is yours or not, because you definitely want to make sure that you are anointed to marry your husband, you're anointed to marry your wife, you want to make sure that the anointing is there, that the fire of the Holy Ghost is there, that the oil of the Holy Ghost is there. Now, what are some things that oil does? Number one, oil lubricates. So wherever you are having friction in your relationship with your spouse or wherever there's friction at, either that is indication that the Holy Ghost is not there or you need to pray and say, Holy Spirit, I need you in this situation because what, what the oil does is it lubricates. So wherever you guys have friction at, there's all of a sudden going to become this really seamless oil. You guys glide together, slide together. It is little friction, little to no friction. It is very powerful. Yeah, I taught this message and anointed, anointed before appointed. Um, a cover by God called anointed before appointed. So you should keep in mind, are we anointed or you want to start praying that now? That needs to be a prayer point. God, anoint me for my husband. God, anoint me for my wife. Let the oil of the Holy Ghost be so saturated over all of us that we have no friction, that it is we glide. It is very easy to work with each other seamlessly because we are frictionless. We, we're lubricated together. It is easy to work together. Another thing that oil does is it heals. Many people used oil oil back in the day for medicinal purposes. And so, Holy Spirit, this relationship should be healing, right? This relationship should be healing. This marriage should be healing. My husband to me should be healing. My wife to me should be healing. If it feels abusive, um, you know, or if it is abusive, that's not your spouse, right? You should be looking at this from the lens of the Holy Spirit. This should be oily, or in other words, the medicinal properties of the Holy Spirit should have come in and that you see some type of healing involved between you and your husband or you and your wife. The oil also lights, right? We use oil to light up something because where God is, there's light, right? Wherever the devil is, there's darkness, but whatever God is, it light. So there should be some type of revelation. There should be light. It allows you to see, right? There's a light of instruction. There's a light of prosperity. It should be illuminous. Like you should, the light of God should be in this situation. Oil also is used to warm up, right? It's fuel for the flame. So God, let the fire of the Holy Ghost be over this relationship, right? Is it cold? Is it, is it, um, does it just feel like the Holy Spirit is not there, right? Those should be some of the things that you take into account. This is a good like checklist, actually. Um, oil also massages, right? People, when you go to get a massage, they use oil to massage you. And in, in other words, it kind of wakes up the bones that weren't there. So does this relationship anoint me to be um, a massager to my husband, anoint me to, um, to, to wherever he's tense in his life to be able to kind of knock out those kinks that whenever he gets around me, he feels more relaxed. He feels more um, um, like released. He's not so tense, right? Let me be that soft place for him that I'm so anointed that I invinegrate. I'm saying that all wrong. Invinegrate, invigorate. Y'all figure that out because I can't pronounce it. My husband, same with you husbands. Don't you get on your wife nerves. And you just say, God, give me the oil to massage her just in, talk, in conversation, massage her in laughter, massage her in cooking and just making sure that life is easy somehow, you know, um, conversation wise, um, all of those things. The oil also is used in perfumes. So wherever the Holy Spirit is, it should be this sweet perfume. Maybe you can't smell it in the natural, but there's just this thing that you know, you just always like to be around this person, always want to like, you just attract it to that person because the oil makes you attractive. The Holy Spirit makes you attractive. And the Holy Spirit, the last thing I want to say is it polishes you, right? Oil polishes, right? Whatever is dusty, you know, you have that old silver in the china cabinet. When you put oil on it, it makes it shine again. So Holy Spirit, let the oil of the Holy Ghost make this relationship shine where you've been married for 10 years, 20 years, 50 years and everything's stale and it looks dusty. Holy Spirit, I ask as a reward of this fast that you polish my marriage like a beautiful china piece 
and it shines once again like it never did before. So let that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let those seven things be kind of your indicator, be the, an indicator of when your husband or wife comes. Kind of go through those things and say, is the Holy Spirit here? And also pray, even now as you're framing your, your marriage. Remember the word frame means also means um, to make one what he ought to be. Make one what he ought to be, right? And so you are also framing your marriage by making it where you ought to be. You know what I'm saying? Give me one second. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, come on over. Sorry, guys. So it invigorates you. Um, okay, my bad. It invigorates you um, to do all that. I think that should be a great example of your relationship. So let's go back to the scripture, Matthew 25. Are you guys there? Matthew 25. Sorry, guys. Okay, Matthew 25. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So here we have a great example of how everybody feels now. The bridegroom has tarried. The bridegroom has delayed. The bridegroom has, uh, he's just taking his precious time. The word tarried means delay, okay? The word slumber means to sleep, to become overcome with or oppressed with sleep and the word sleep means to normally rest. So there's a difference that all of these people both slumbered and slept. Some slumber means to be overcome and to be oppressed with sleep. There's a difference between slumber and slept, okay? The Bible says at midnight, there was a cry made, behold the bridegroom cometh, go out and meet him. I need you to take note that the word at midnight means something very, very, very important. The word at midnight, because this is, so here, what I'm saying is, is he came without nobody knowing he was coming. Okay. He came without anybody knowing that he was coming. Nobody knew. Not my daughter sending me how to pronounce invigorate. Let me see. Invigorate. invigorate. I knew I was saying it wrong. My goodness gracious, invigorate. So the Bible says, and at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh. What does this mean? At midnight, there was a cry made. At midnight, there was a cry made. At midnight, there was a cry made. It literally means that when at the least, like nobody knew. At midnight, there was a cry made. Nobody knew. No, absolutely nobody knew this was happening. Here's what I think is powerful. The word midnight means a time when work ceases. The word midnight means the time for deeds of shame. The word midnight means time of moral stupidity and darkness. Hello? Um, I'm going to text you the name. It's probably at the reception desk. Okay, let me check now. Um, the word midnight means time of moral stupidity and darkness, and it also means time when the weary and drunk give over to slumber. This means that he's coming when you literally least expect it. He's coming likely when you are in your sin. He's coming likely when you are, you think you've given up. You don't think that he is even coming. You, you've given up that he's even you're like, you know what, let me just go sleep with so-and-so real quick. 
And he's saying at midnight is when he came, which is when most people would be doing um, the deeds of shame. Most people will be doing, it's a time of moral stupidity and darkness. It's a time when the weary and drunk give over to slumber. So he's coming when you think at the very moment you say to yourself, this is not worth it. I'm just going to give up. I'm going to just do what I want to do. That is when he, the bridegroom is coming. And you go back to Matthew 25 and he says, and then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Okay. They all arose and they trimmed their lamps. So they still all woke up and they did the same things, even though some had uh, oil and some didn't. They still prepared as if they had it. And the Bible says, and the foolish said to the wise, give us your oil for our lamps are gone out. Give us your oil for your, our lamps. Are... Isn't it funny how people want what you give us some of your Holy Ghost. Pray for us because we don't have the oil like we thought we did. Verse nine says, but the wise answer saying, not so lest there not be enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now, I want to stop there because some people think that if you really see what that's saying, you know, God tells us to give. And this scripture, God said, the wise virgins said, I'm not sharing with you anything. The wise virgin said, you should have had it yourself. That's what the wise virgin says. I'm not sharing nothing with you. You should have brought it for yourself. I'm not sharing anything with you. I'm not sharing it. But I want you all to go. And look up the definition of the word shut, he said, because when the, when they went out to go shop, he shut up the door. Do y'all see that word? Sorry, I got to open up my door one more time because I don't know why I keep closing. There we go. The Bible says... While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. The word shut, y'all, means to cause the heavens to withhold rain. The word shut means to shut up compassion so that it's, a, it's like a thing inaccessible to somebody else. The word shut means to stop pity towards the unprepared. The word shut means to obstruct the entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Y'all, this, this Matthew 25 is deeper than y'all thought. When they went to go by because they were unprepared, God does not like unprepared people. He literally will stop the compassion of people. So you somewhere like, nobody will help me out. Y'all don't have no compassion. No, there's a place in God where he will stop the compassion because you should have been prepared. You should have had the Holy Ghost. Verse 11 says, afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he said, verily I say unto you, I don't even know you. Watch therefore, watch, circle that word watch, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh. Watch, 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 give strict attention to. Take heed lest through remission and indol indolence some destructive calamity suddenly overtake you. Be vigilant, be watchful, keep yourself awake. such a great, 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 great story. So powerful. So all day today, it's, it's just so powerful. I just want to make sure um, if you go to Revelations 19, I don't know if you guys know over the last few covered by God's, we've been singing hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. Now, I don't know if you guys know that that's a marriage song in the book of Revelations chapter 19. That's not a song I told the audience to sing. It is literally a song that they started to sing on their own before Cover by God started. It's like a song everybody just comes up to sing an hour before we get started, because about an hour before Cover by God starts, we are kind of already packed, right? And the Bible says in verse um, one of Revelations 19, he says, and after those things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. And he also said in verse um, six, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a mighty thundering saying, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. 
And verse seven says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. We just talked about God over in Matthew 25, needing his wife to be ready. Men, this also applies to you. He needs his wife to be ready. And so I'm gonna get off because I'm, I'm still in prayer and preparing for cover by God. It is gonna be super powerful. Um, but I want you to make sure that you are in a very high level of praise, high level of worship, high level of all of the things, just staying before God every single hour on the hour, worshiping, praying, praising, thanking God every hour on the hour. Um, again, your homework assignment is to rewrite your congratulations letter and rewrite your list of characteristics without you going back to look at the initial one you wrote on day one. That is your homework assignment. And just to make sure that all day, every hour on the hour, you will be thanking God, you will be praising God, you will be magnifying God. Cover by God will be streaming live on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just hit the subscribe button if you have not done it already. And um, this is not too late, you guys, for you to redo the fast. You don't have to quit today. You can turn this into a 40-day fast and start back at day one. You can um, say, you know what, I want to start on this uh, on Monday and I'll condense it into a seven-day fast. I'll condense it into a 15-day fast. Like, it's all good. You can do all of them. And so I want you to make sure that you do that. And somebody said, what does it look like when somebody has a Holy Ghost? You got to read it. Hold on one second. Let me put y'all down for a second. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I'm um, also, you know, and if you guys want to remember, I'm gonna, I'm putting out a book with all of the prayers for this fast. So you'll be able to get that as well. And, um, maybe you guys, you know, now that you all have a heightened level of a gift of discerning of spirits that you all can gather a group of friends that you don't think are monitoring spirits and you can um, get with them and do it together because the power of agreement is really, really, really powerful. And so I'm excited. Uh, what are the other announcements? I am gonna do like a after the year of the bride. So maybe like on Sunday or something, I'm gonna do another live and probably be a Q&A just to answer your questions like, what's next? What do we do after a, a dynamic fast like this? Like, what? how do we posture ourselves? What do we need to do? So don't worry, I'm not like leaving you right now. We will come back um, at the top of next week and we're gonna go through all of the things on what do we do now? How do we maintain our faith? How do we maintain all of these things? And so keep that in mind. I'm excited. It's going to be so good. And today's a day, if you guys want to sow, we've spent a lot of time sowing into the poor. If you have not done that already, please make sure you sow to the poor before the fast is over. I don't care where you find somebody poor at. Uh, you better just leave out and give somebody on the street some something. Give them some type of money, $10, $20. I don't know, whatever it is you got. But make sure before the fast is over, you give to the poor. That is very important to God. And um, many of you like sowing in the cover by God, but I always ask that before you ever sow into us, you give to the poor. I don't ever want to, you know, just give to the poor first. If you have not given to the poor, please do not give the cover by God until that is done. That is a priority to God. It's a priority to us. And so um, those of you that want to sow in the cover by God, you can do that on the last day of the fast, which is today. And I'll put a link on how to do that in the comments and I'll pin it to the top of the comments. Uh, we only have one cash app and that's dollar sign millions conference. 
It is the only cash app we have and all of that goes to Covered by God. So please, please, please do not fall for any other cash app. Do not fall for any other name. There's a lot of scammers out here, but you guys now are filled with the Holy Ghost and you have a high level of the gift of discerning of spirits and you just won't get tricked by people asking you for money that's not me. So please keep in mind if you're sewing on cash app, the only cash app we have is dollar sign millions conference. That's it. Um, but I'll put all of the links in the comments and I'll pin it to the top. Also, if you are international, I literally don't have any way to take your money. Um, but it seems as though you guys can sew in the comments right here in YouTube is what I'm seeing. So that's the only way because I, I have no way to take anybody's money that lives out of the country. Um, and so I think that you can sew right here on YouTube and feel free to do that if that is possible. Outside of that, I don't know how to take your money out of the country. And so maybe just give it to the poor instead. And I will accept it as a seed to cover by God, you know? So I think that is it for now. Um, any other announcements I have, I'll make it, I'll make it at Covered by God. And, uh, and make sure that all of you are there live. If you're not going to be there in person, make sure that you're streaming live. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do have a PayPal. It's paypal.me forward slash Tiffany Montgomery. Please spell my name right because if you don't, the scammers have also spelled my name every way you could think of just in case you make an error in spelling it. And it's T-I-P-H-A-N-I-M-O-N-T-G-O-M-E-R-Y. It's the capital of Alabama. So Tiffany Montgomery, just make sure you spell it right. But it's paypal.me forward slash Tiffany Montgomery. I also have Givelify, so you guys can just go straight to CoveredByGod.co and click giving. It makes it a lot easier because it's just a button right there that you can give to. It makes life a lot easier. But um, yeah, I'm excited. Covered by God is going to be fire. Um, you mentioned 20, Matthew 25 involved the key. Did I mention Matthew 25 invo involved the key? I don't. I didn't see a key in Matthew 25. Maybe I said it. I'm sorry if I did. I don't see a key in Matthew 25. Or maybe I just I'm reading your comment wrong. Um, yeah, we're gonna take communion in a second. Just making sure I got all of my announcements out. All right, I think I did. So, uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, get your communion out. We take the bread. And we take in a remembrance of you and we declare that you took, we were already healed. And so as we take your bread right in our marriages, healing in our bodies, healing in our life, healing in everything that pertains to us, healing, 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 healing. Okay, go ahead and partake of the bread. And then Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that promised that the curse was broken. The Bible says, cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. And Father, you hung on the cross for our sins and you took the curse from us. We declare, Father, that you have heard us. We declare that every curse has been broken, every altar has been demolished, and every bloodline has been restored and reset back to the original design that we belong to you. So as we take the blood of Jesus Christ, we take it knowing that the blood goes to the foundation of everything that concerns us and the curse has been broken. Go ahead and partake in the, in the drinking of the blood. And if nobody else has said it to you, let me be the first to say congratulations. Mwah. Love you guys. See you uh, at seven. Bye.